Carly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, June 18th. So we have the moon in Scorpio all day. And of course, that means that we are deep in our feels. And some of those feels are getting pretty intense, especially seeing as now we have Venus and Mercury in Cancer energy. There's a lot of water building up in the cosmos, which is a very dramatic shift to all of the air energy that we were essentially drowning under. I know that sounds oxymoronic, but if you've been feeling like your head is going to explode, that is due to all the air pressure. Now we are watching some of these planets move into water energies, which definitely throws us into the deep end of our fields. And with the moon and Scorpio specifically, we are doing some shadow work especially examining our relationship dynamics, examining the options and opportunities still available to us that we are trying to sort through and process in order to align with the choice point, align with the decision point, a path of direction prior to entering into the solstice energy that is very much sucking us in at this particular point in time. So of course, yesterday was a major day here on the 17th with Venus and Mercury moving out of Gemini energy, moving into Cancer energy, squaring off with Neptune, really helping to peel back the layers of confusion and renew, resurrect a new faith, new hopes, new wishes within us. So there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. 10 of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in the Scorpio energy going to make a awkward interaction with the sun in Gemini energy. So again, the sun shining very brightly towards the end of this Gemini sector. We are still contemplating the choice points, the decision points, the path, the direction that we are again leaning further into one over the other at this point, but we're still very unsure and uncertain. Any time that we have the moon and the sun coming together in any kind of interaction, there's going to be an aha moment. The aha moment is very revealing on emotional wants, needs, and desires, on options and opportunities to really get anchored into these new wants, needs, and desires, further eliminating some options, some choice points that are no longer supporting the realization that we're currently having about what we want, what we need, what we desire for the long term. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with the north node in Aries energy. That north node is trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, to reach our soul's potential. That north node needs us to be a little bit more independent. We have a solo quest, a solo adventure that we need to go on for ourselves. The moon interacting with the north node in this way, definitely creating a little bit more confusion than we would like because the wants, needs, and desires that we currently have are kind of conflicting with the wants, needs, and desires that we previously established, especially in particular relationship dynamics. So we don't know where we're going from here. We don't know the path forward. We don't know what it is that we actually want to do. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy at the final 29th degree, which creates a little bit of chaos, a little bit of craziness, a little bit of urgency. Now, granted, this is a water on water interaction, which means that there is a lot of emotion, a lot of intuition that we have to kind of do a deep dive in in order to remind ourselves what it is that we actually want, need and desire, not only for ourselves, but for our higher self mission. This particular interaction definitely going to overwhelm us with a lot of emotion, a lot of those feels, a lot of those intuitive insights. Again, the moon in Scorpio needs to make a major change, a major transformation within us between our heart and our head before we can engage the physical body, take action and make moves out in the physical realm. This is a reminder of our calling, of our mission, of the sum of the goals, the dreams, the visions that maybe we abandon in order to put other people's wants, needs and desires ahead of our own. This tension point, this conflict needs to be illuminated in order for us to clearly see where it is that maybe we've abandoned ourselves once again. 
Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, now in this Cancer energy, going to make a very tough interaction with Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy, trying to highlight the power struggle within. This particular interaction is definitely going to trigger and activate a lot of, let's call it, painful thoughts, painful feelings, intensify where it is that some shadow work needs to be done. Why is that? Well, first of all, we're second guessing our feelings. We're second guessing our relationship dynamics, the path in which we're walking, what it is that we're doing. We're even questioning whether or not we still feel called to kind of follow the path, the quest, the direction that many of us have been pursuing for about a month even more so, taking us back to the new moon solar eclipse in that Aries energy. So this is definitely going to trigger some fears, some doubts, some insecurities, some jealousy issues, maybe. This is a good analyzation of where it is that we're not feeling so safe and secure in some relationship dynamics. Again, the cancer energy that Venus is in, very attached to the past, but focused on safety, security, and stability, especially in our emotional realm. Therefore, we have to highlight where it is that we're feeling none of those things in order for us to fix, heal, and resolve some of those particular issues. This is going to illuminate where it is that we've been actively trying to ignore some of the red flags that have definitely been waving in our faces. We have to identify the problem in order for us to fix it. We have to become aware of where it is that we're not feeling so safe and secure in certain circumstances and instances, and especially with the people that we have been choosing to share time, energy, and space with. The moon and Scorpio then going to make an awkward interaction with Venus, and that is definitely going to put on the pressure of the shadow work that needs to be done. We see the moon interact with Mercury because, of course, Venus and Mercury are moving very closely together now in this Cancer energy. And of course, this is water on water action. We are essentially in choppy waters at this particular point. Venus and Mercury just shifted into this Cancer energy. We haven't had a whole lot of time to kind of acclimate to having to sort through the deep emotional feels that we've been avoiding for the past month in that Gemini season. So the moon interacting with first Venus, then Mercury, going to have a major wake up, major shake up in our headspace, in our heart space, especially with some aha moments, some epiphany, some light bulb moments popping off in the most difficult of ways in order to illuminate what needs to change, what needs to transform, not only within us, but within particular relationship dynamics as well. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with that north node. So obviously sitting in that tension, that conflict, that shadow, we are figuring some things out. We're figuring the smaller little power plays that we could be making in order to advance ourselves forward. This is an aha moment, a little bit of clarity, a little bit of insight on where it is that we have some opportunities to kind of grow. Those tension points, that conflict, those triggers, those activations, that is welcoming us to boss up, to do better, to be better, to flip the script, to see it from a different lens, and therefore take different actions in order to create a different result. The moon then trines Saturn, Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline in Pisces energy. This is water on water action in the most favorable way that we could ever get. It's a gentle nudge, a growing point in the right direction. This is going to help kind of soothe our soul a little bit. This is going to help kind of draw our attention to the very, I'm going to say dramatic changing landscape of our emotions. This is going to kind of reassure to us that guess what? We got to calm our asses down. We have to stabilize ourselves. We have to ground ourselves. We have to become very aware of where it is that we're at before we take any action to try to get to where it is that we want to go. We have to strike a balance, if you will, between, yes, recognizing our emotions, but also recognizing a, let's call it logical, practical action that we could take in order to resolve said conflict. So this is kind of like a reality check. However, 
It is pushing us into the emotional realm to see where it is that we could actually fix, heal, resolve some of these particular issues by taking some small but very powerful steps to open up the lines of communication, to actually see where it is that we've been avoiding, growing, evolving, and where it is that, again, we are choosing to stand still in this pause energy in order to gain bearings, in order to gain insight. The moon then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Pluto. Pluto rules over the Scorpio energy that the moon is currently in. Pluto, again, retrograde in Aquarius energy. This is fixed energy interacting with each other. Scorpio energy is a fixed water sign. Aquarius energy is a fixed air sign. The Aquarius energy is allowing us to act as the observer. And the moon in Scorpio is taking us on a deep dive to examine the darker parts of self. Now, this is going to be a powerful realization, very intense in the emotional realm, helping us to peel back the layers, especially in our psyche, especially in our perspective, especially in our programming on where it is that we have kind of, I'm going to say, limited ourselves from seeing the forest past the trees. We've been so tunnel vision on one particular problem, one particular issue that we don't realize that there is a lot more going on than just that and that they're all interconnected, all intertwined. And so this has the ability and potential to kind of re realize new insights, take on a different perspective, flip the script, so to speak. And all of this is definitely bossing us up, empowering us to not only kind of find stability in our emotions, but to see where it is that we actually have more power and control over our situation circumstances than we've believed up until this particular point. The moon is then going to interact with the sun again, this time in a positive interaction, which means that we are receiving new insights, what we actually want, what we actually need, what we actually desire, what we're actually being called to do and pursue. And again, the options, the variables, the opportunities, the choice points, the decision points. Now we are seeing that one is much more favorable over the other. Again, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that we aren't going to arrive at our decision point until the end of Gemini season, which is technically at this point, two days away. So there's going to be a lot of realization, a lot of finalization on what it is that we're choosing for ourselves to actually throw ourselves into for this next karmic chapter that we will be entering into with that solstice energy on the 20th. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon making a very difficult interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. So just as we're building ourselves up, just as we're feeling confident, just as we're feeling in power and in control of our emotions, of our perspective, of our circumstances, Suddenly, we take a deep dive into the negative narrative. Suddenly, this is going to make us feel raw, vulnerable, insecure, fearful. This is the old version of the old ego self kind of creeping back in to keep us in a state of paralysis. Again, that moon in Scorpio wants us to change, wants us to transform, wants us to merge the division within us back to a state of wholeness. And just as we're attempting to do that, just as we're attempting to kind of build ourselves up, again, that negative ass narrative comes creeping back in, opening us up to old pain, old trauma, old thoughts, old reactions. And the Chiron energy, that wounded healer, is definitely bringing the wounded part out to play. So again, the moon in Scorpio needs us to kind of sit in this ego programming, in these fears, in these doubts, in these insecurities, because that is the shadow work that the moon in Scorpio promotes. And when we can kind of acknowledge these particular parts of self, we can flip the script. We can build ourselves up. We can understand that acting as the higher healed self will actually free us to move on, to make some progress, to create a different path, a different realm, a different reality.